Hello, everyone. Welcome to another season of the Humanitarians of Africa series, where we have been sharing the stories of amazing founders from Africa doing great work in Africa and for Africans. Today, I have from Nigeria, Mr. Mahfouz, who is here to share his story with us about the amazing work he does with his organization based off in Nigeria. Welcome, Mr. Mahfouz. It is so amazing to have you here to share your story with me today. Thank you. Uh, it's nice um, being with you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's get straight into what we have for today. Can you please introduce yourself to us? Who are you? What do you do? And anything else you think we should know about you today? Okay. Um. So my name is Mafu Zalabidon. I am a postgraduate student of uh, Lagos State University. I'm a trained education and uh, educationist. I happen to um, have passion for education, uh, particularly the policy and administration of education in, in ensuring that um, uh, education is for all. Mm. And uh, I do this with passion because I believe that education is the goal to everything in life. Mm -hmm. uh, for the past five years, I've been coordinating, I've been the founder and coordinator of uh, Inmate Education Foundation, uh, which is keenly for those in the prison to ensure that they have access to education. Mm -hmm. And um, so far, we've been able to impact about 1,500 in Wonderful. about three states in Nigeria, Lagos, Ebony States, and Ocean States as we mm -hmm. speak. Mm -hmm. uh, our project has been active in those places in ensuring that inmates and juvenile have access to education. So that's what I do basically, and uh, that is who I am. I'm an advocacy of education, particularly for those in the prison. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. You're doing so much work. When I had the opportunity to talk with someone on your team, your media um, coordinator, I was like, wow, you guys are doing so much for the inmates in Nigeria and it will be a great opportunity to have you. So thank you once again for, for coming on board to share your story with me. Um, so why inmates? I can understand that you have a passion for education and you're an education advocate, but why did you decide to focus on providing educational services for inmates why exactly what's the story behind that and also if you could tell us more about the work that you do at inmates educational foundation okay so if you um many a times when people ask me why inmates uh i know people don't want to talk about these people mm -hmm. um yes mm -hmm. because maybe uh they've offended the law of the land mm -hmm. they've uh you know, they are criminals. They are people that we don't want to associate with. We mm. want a justice to be given to them. Mm. Um, but um, we see it from a different angle mm. that, yes, they have committed a crime. They have offended the law of the land. They need to be punished. But uh, research has it that seven out of ten of these people are not educated, don't have access to education. That is why they find themselves in those crimes that they committed today. Uh, for somebody who is educated, would somehow want to guide himself or protect himself from ensuring that he doesn't find him, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't commit a crime. Mm -hmm. So, and then uh, you have a situation where um, prison in Nigeria is different from what we have in Europe in all other developed countries mm -hmm. uh you know prison is a place where in fact is second to hell in nigeria mm -hmm. so um when people go to prison in nigeria people go to prison with a loss of hope so we want to restore that hope mm -hmm. through education mm -hmm. and to also give them an opportunity to life mm -hmm. and because opportunity uh, education is opportunity to life like we know mm -hmm. uh so uh, the story behind it that I that I tell people is sometimes they go. I used to visit the prison uh, for welfare and all that, and I discover that uh, people in the prison don't really need what welfare package people give them. Mm. It's just an immediate attention to say you want to give them welfare package. 
uh, you see a lot of recidivism coming up every time. Uh, you see people uh, leaving the prison and after two, three years, you mm -hmm. hear that they are back to prison. Mm -hmm. And that has been the story that I hear and that I have witnessed. Mm -hmm. So I, dis I felt that this is a challenge that as an educationist, somebody who has been trained in education and who is a professional teacher, I felt this is an opportunity for me to liberate and reform them uh, for better. And then through that, we can also empower them for economic development and which we have been working on so far. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, uh, this project, I see it as um, a project that is calling for everybody. That's why I always say that all lands must be on, chair, on deck mm -hmm. to, to ensure that these people are reformed or else they come back to the society and disturb us. And, you know, we mm -hmm. continue to spend uh, hard -earned money to protect ourselves instead of protecting mm -hmm. them while they were there mm -hmm. for a better society that we can all benefit from. And mm -hmm. we, we can also see that these are people that can be reformed for better. For somebody who has the instinct of committing crime, it shows that the person has the instinct of doing something better off. If somebody, for instance, can can say that he wants to be doing Yahoo, mm. he wants to be stealing, you know, um, the the mentality of doing that, the instinct of doing that can also be an instinct of positivity to the society. Sure. Okay. So, which means that if somebody can be in that situation, we can also coin the person for a better society. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why we took it upon ourselves to, um, you know, ensure that they are educated. What do we do basically at our organization is to give them the normal literacy, adult and advanced education. Uh, my undergraduate thesis was on research on the prison education. What mm. is their level of education? And that came out to be that seven out of them of them do not have access to education or a dropout, maybe because of community, society, parental factors and all that, which is the reason why they are dropouts in, uh, in the school. Mm -hmm. So we want to rewrite the story. We want to rewrite the, uh, the, the story of being educated and giving them the opportunity in the prison. So we have a bulk of volunteers uh, who are teachers. We don't have the funds to say we want to employ full-time teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we do basically is to bring people of like mind, students, university lecturers, you know, uh, core members who out of their time can also donate volunteer their time to say, okay, let me go to the prison and teach mathematics, mm -hmm. English, mm -hmm. uh, all other subjects that you can think of. And it will interest you to know that in the last three years, uh, we've been consistent about sponsoring the inmates for the GC and WAEC exam mm -hmm. in the prison. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, we sponsored about 15 inmates, both in Lagos and Ebony State, and the results came out um, very well. Wow. Uh, we are planning to have about uh, 10 of them uh, going to the National Open University in the prison. Oh, no. This is uh, what we do. And, you know, by that, we are trying to rewrite the story that, yes, they are criminals. They may have committed a crime. Some of them have not been com convicted. Mm -hmm. But then it doesn't mean that their story cannot change for better. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that they cannot be beneficial to the society, to the community at large. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are doing, basically. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Great yeah. work. The fact that you are not putting a full stop to someone's story. You want yeah. it to continue and you want to turn their lives around through education. That's a very good perspective to look at yeah. it. I'm, I'm glad that you actually threw some light on that today. So when you were sharing, you mentioned, um, you mentioned the fact that some of these people have not yet been convicted. You also mentioned the fact that the prisons in Nigeria or in Africa generally are not cannot be compared to the system, prison systems we have in Europe or, or outside Africa. So could you give us an in-depth look at that? What is the current prison system and also the justice system in Nigeria through your experience? And how are you, what, what exactly do you think is 
a possible solution to making this system better? Well, um, the prison system in Nigeria and uh, what I think um, can make it better. Firstly, the prison system in Nigeria um, has gone through a transformation. Hmm. Initially, we used to have what is called prison. And in the history of prison, prison is just like having people who have been enslaved over time uh, there in the prison. That is the way it has been in the history of prison. Mm -hmm. But the Nigeria system have said, okay, we want to have it called correctional center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, correctional center is just about reforming them for a better society. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, there is a lot to be done in that particular correctional center that we have today in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. In US, they still call it prison. And they have the reason why they call it prison. And in so many other countries, they call it prison. Mm -hmm. Because they know that correctional center would correctional facilities mm -hmm. would need a lot of things. In mm -hmm. my country, Nigeria, there's a lot to be done in terms of reformation for education, reformation for empowerment, reformation of mental and psychological um, uh, you know, changes that, um, that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And from my own, from my own uh, experience, there's a lot to be done because uh, this material, the resources are not there. I give you an instance of the consistency that I represent in the prison, which is mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. You will not believe that in Nigerian correctional centers, there is no school facilities mm -hmm. in the correctional centers. There's no library. There is no, yes, the government will come and tell you, uh, we've been able to graduate 500 National Open University, 300 National Open University, this, this, that. But I can tell you, I can, you can do a fact check on this. Is that that's really not majority there? of <laughs> majority of it are not there. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. are the ones most of the times mm -hmm. that go to this building, yeah. start the mm -hmm. school system, mm -hmm. renovate the uh, the building. Mm -hmm. You know, get the resources, the materials to teach, get the teachers to teach, mm -hmm. get everything mm -hmm. to be in place for them to be educated. Mm -hmm. Even those in the National Open University in Kirikiri. Uh, maximum prison that we have in Lagos, they most of the times use their money to pay for these materials that, are, that mm -hmm. they are studying with. So, which means that sometimes their parents or NGOs like us would have to sponsor them to get educated. So, it means that we are not ready for what we have said we want to do. Mm. That is one angle of what we have. Now, Recently, the federal government said they signed into law that um, uh, uh, the prison and some other um, some other entities, mm -hmm. uh, some other ministries, can now be a non-essential, meaning that the state government can take charge of some of these things. Mm -hmm. Meaning the federal government is not going to be. Uh, seriously mm -hmm. responsible, mm -hmm. like PHCN, like um, uh, correctional center Just was trying also to elevate themselves and remove yes, themselves yes, from yes. responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yes, some states are going to be in advantage, mm -hmm. like Lagos State, mm -hmm. uh, like Rivers, like mm -hmm. Kano, maybe Kano. I'm not really sure of the economy system in Kano, but I can tell you that even at that some states are still going to suffer it Definitely. because it means that the state government will be the one to take charge of those things. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about a state government that cannot even pay salaries Salary. of civil servants. Mm -hmm. How do you want to mm -hmm. now take care of people in the prison that you mm -hmm. have assumed that they are criminals, criminals, that you know that even if you support them, you, you don't believe in them. Let me just mm -hmm. put it that way. So, it means that there's a lot to be done in my country, Nigeria. Mm. And like I used to say, these are people that if you leave them and you mistakenly release them back to the society, they are going to be mean. They are going to be criminals. They are going to be more criminal than the way you think they mm. are before mm -hmm. you even take them. Mm. A lot of stories, a lot of news have come out to say that a lot. some of the people that left the prison after some time, they join a bad gang as a, 
is anti as a robbery squad mm. as people that smoke because there was no any reformation in the first place so you just keep them in that place and even the place that you are keeping them is a place that ordinarily a building that was designed to to get out of 40 people you are putting 100 people mm -hmm. meaning you are putting 60 mm. more people in a building that is supposed to have about 40 people so how do you think even if the person doesn't want to be mean mm -hmm. by the time he leaves he would naturally want to be because we are humans too maybe for an offense that he never even committed in the first place that he was there mm -hmm. and because of the justice system that we have that is as slow as a snail mm -hmm. you know uh somebody that is supposed to be convicted for a crime uh maybe just to pay a fine of 10 10,000, 5,000, he's there serving a jail term of six months. And sometimes he may not even have the money to pay for that. To pay for that. Mm. I give you an instance of uh, a man that I met in Ebony State. Uh, this man told me that he is just here because of 15,000 Naira. Mm. I asked him what his crime. He said his crime was that he was selling on the street. And so the government said they should not sell on the streets. There was a time the government raided and Jua, he was thrown into the prison. Ah. The, the, gov the, the, the court mm. said that he's to pay 15,000 Naira. The man that was arrested, the total amount of what he's selling is just 10,000 Naira. In fact, his market has been, you know, the way the system is, he may not even get the market. So this is somebody... Mm -hmm. that was arrested because he was selling a market mm -hmm. of 10,000 Naira. Mm -hmm. And today you're to asking him to pay 15,000 15, Naira fine. So if such a man leaves the prison, what do you want him to continue doing? Mm -hmm. What do you want him to be doing? I'm not saying that the man was right for having selling on the road, but I think there is a way we can do things better. Better. Mm -hmm. Instead of us just unnecessarily putting people him where they don't and, belong, uh, yeah, mm. people that would have been better for our economy, that mm. would have been better for our society. Mm. So, you know, these are the kind of uh, things that we have in my country. And, you know, there's a lot to be done in the prison system as far as I'm concerned. And I feel uh, all hands must be on deck mm. to ensure that things are done properly. If you leave it to the government, I'm telling you, the government don't really believe these people mm. for a reformation. Mm. You only hear in the news that we have been able to change the name and all that. Mm. It's, a, it's a very sad system. Imagining arresting someone for that is selling something of 10,000 and you're asking him to bring 15,000. Now he doesn't have, and he can stay longer than that. He can stay longer than six months. It's really a very, very poor system. Like, it's heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking. Honestly, it's honestly, heartbreaking. It, it is, it is, it is. Mm. But it I'm is. glad that there are organizations like yours that are that are doing tiny things in their own little way to sort some of these problems out and, and help the people that are right there in the prison. So um, moving yeah. on, now that you have told us about the systems that are that are right there in, in, in Nigeria, in the correctional facilities and all of that, all the prisons, um, what programs, you mentioned that you do, um, you, you have volunteer teachers that teach different subjects in the, in, the, in the prison. So apart from the teaching, are there any other specific programs that you, you have for these inmates that are beneficial to them and solving some of those problems that you already mentioned? Okay, so um, in my organization, uh, basically we do everything that has to do with education. Okay. And uh, so as long as we consider the inmates mm. who are the adults, we also consider the young offenders. Mm. Uh, and let me also say this, the young offenders not all of them are criminals. Mm. Uh, yes, we have some who have committed a crime and uh, the law has to take his charge on them. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some that maybe their parents in some cases um, could not take care of them. Uh, and so the government will have to take responsibility of that. Mm -hmm. And we also have some of them who maybe they ran out of the house for... Um, uh, you know, peer influence and all that. 
and some maybe uh they they needed a, an attention of the government on a perceived crime that the mm -hmm. young boy or girl is planning to commit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so most times you find them in that place and that's why it, it, it's not really a restricted place like what we have in the prison mm -hmm. that is one side aside from the education that we uh, give in terms of literacy and all that mm -hmm. we also have um career guidance and counseling okay. that we you know uh also organize for them mm -hmm. uh and then mentorship as well uh maybe for anybody who wants to be in who wants to become a professional maybe lawyer maybe engineer maybe mm -hmm. anything we have mm -hmm. some of our friends our like minds who okay uh, we want you to mentor this person to mm. be like what you are today. Mm. We also have that in place. Mm. And then we also have juveniles learn uh, code. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, we're in the 21st century and we also need to expose them to um, digital yeah. skills. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this will be coming up by before the end of the year. And uh, we're also trying to reach out to sponsors and organizers, uh, uh, support uh, partnerships for this as well. Then we also have, you know, um, education seminar just to continue to refresh their memory on why they need to be educated. Mm. So most times we bring uh, experts in education and people who have achieved through education and all mm. that, you know, they come motivate them and, and you know, support them in, in that angle. Mm. Then we also used to have a special um, uh, GC and um, tutorial sessions mm -hmm. that used to be a very uh, tough time because we want to ensure that yeah, for right. the money we are spending mm -hmm. on the GC mm -hmm. exam, it doesn't waste. So we used to reach out for welfare and all that to ensure that they have everything it takes to pass the exam mm -hmm. or without excuse. Mm -hmm. So that's also on the other side. And, you know, generally it's all about education. Wonderful. Thank you wonderful great to see that there are so many initiatives to help them at every every point in time and i'm most excited to see the juvenile can code program looking forward to to seeing uh, more about that so let's talk about yeah. the challenges that you face so how exactly are you able to you know work with this group of people and what are the challenges that you face having to work with um the inmates in the prisons educating them and all of that well um it's interesting to note that from the angle of the inmates we've not faced any challenge wonderful uh, like people used to think that ah these mm. people are hardened criminal they yeah. are going to hurt mm -hmm. you they are going mm -hmm. to in fact majority of them used to uh complain and are not happy the weeks that we are not able to make it maybe because of finance or maybe because of they will always always want to see us come because mm -hmm. uh, maybe because of the kind of, of initiative mm -hmm. that we have brought to them mm -hmm. they also see the reason why they need to be educated so there's no challenge in fact they always want us to come around and you know teach them and we're always happy because of the uh positive response that we get from them mm -hmm. and that is the fact that they are always ready to learn mm -hmm. yes there there are challenges in the angle of the prison system yeah. uh bureaucracy you know a restriction mm -hmm. to so many things that we can't do we can do and all that mm -hmm. but i always say something relationship matters mm -hmm. uh so long as there is relationship you know how to go your way uh, the last time we launched our project in Oshun State, just uh, some months ago, I think in January, we almost uh, stopped the project because of uh, the bureaucracy and you can't do this, we have to do this and all that and all that. But at the end, we scaled through uh, mm -hmm. the challenge uh, from the management uh, angle. Mm -hmm. And like I always say that because this is a noble project, Many a times people always want to listen to us because they know that this is something that uh, can also reform the system. Mm -hmm. So uh, aside from the bureaucracy angle, the only challenge that I think 
uh, majorly people should always come to the aid is the uh, challenge of resources. Yeah. Uh, it's always very difficult to think of what to teach and then to also think of, ah, they don't have resources. How mm -hmm. do I get resources? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, resources of materials, books, pencils, stationaries, and all that. It's always very difficult to think of that. Mm -hmm. And then to also think of, how do I get funds to to give to teachers that will be yeah. going? Mm -hmm. Because the distance of uh, the prisons are not always very uh, close by. Mm -hmm. uh, so... But Agri is a very far place towards mm -hmm. the end of uh, Lagos. Uh, Lagos State or mm -hmm. even Nigeria. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, all our volunteers are in the cities. Mm -hmm. So it's more like you are traveling every week to teach mm -hmm. the people in Badagri. Mm -hmm. Same as people in uh, Ocean State. Mm -hmm. The place where the prison in Ocean State is situated is in a very far place. So... You know, uh, all these are some of the things that are, are major challenges, uh, resources, funds, and, you know, uh, um, uh, materials to teach mm -hmm. with. Most times are not always adequate. Mm -hmm. And even if they are adequate, they are not uh, quality things that we have mm -hmm. that can be used in teaching. So these are some of the, you know, challenges that we used to have over time. Mm. Yeah. It is it is sad to see that even with the bad prison systems, you still find that the management are giving a tough time to the organizations that want to help them solve these problems that they have. <laughs> it's really, really uh, sad. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I, sometimes it, I feel it's like, like, like it's, it's our like I don't want to say African problem because it might not be the same in other places, but let's just say it's our Nigerian yeah. problem. Really crazy. Yes, really yes, crazy yes, yes, yes. You know, you know, some of them, some of them used to think that there is there is this benefit that you guys are hmm. taking from what exactly is the benefit? Unfortunately, exactly unfortunately the benefit? there's there's no benefit. Yes, because is. I can tell you that some some of our volunteers used to used to get um scared sometimes That's when they are going to be yeah, pregnant. because you'll be thinking so, about what will happen particularly the females mm. yeah particularly the females but that's why i used to call all the volunteers heroes and heroines because it's actually different from the normal volunteering job that everybody wants to mm -hmm. do everybody mm -hmm. does you know majority of time organizations will just celebrate you dance you sing yeah. mm -hmm. you snap pictures you do videos most times you don't see our volunteers doing all this mm. and because they can't even do it. Mm. So you are in for a serious business if you have mm. said you want to do this. Mm. So, you know, mm. so and that you is... Know, why that's why would they be thinking there is something in it for the people? These people are giving their time, giving their resources, their knowledge for free and you are giving them a hard time. That's... Yeah. <laughs> Nigeria is, is what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, so moving on, um, let's talk about you now. Uh, apart from your non-profit that you run, what are the other passions that you have uh, that you do on the side or other passions that you are exploiting or experiencing at the moment when it comes to yourself personally? Okay, so um, what I do, uh, aside from the non-profit that mm -hmm. I run, Mm -hmm. I do consulting in education. Uh, you know, uh, I have, I also have a logistics business that I do by the site. And um, I also do research on, on, in education. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I do columnists for the guidance newspaper. You can check uh, mm -hmm. some of the articles I've written and contributed to mm -hmm. all in education mm -hmm. at uh, the guardian and sometimes in other newspapers mm -hmm. uh, uh so and uh, like i said i'm a student so i also i also uh learn and uh, mm -hmm. hopefully i'm going to start my phd before the end of the year or maybe next year uh mm -hmm. so i'm in between on <laughs> maybe i should start this year or maybe next year but uh, all in all, uh, education is my passion, and I build all that I do on edu in education. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. You're an educationist, and you're a businessman, and you're also a columnist. That's that's really good. Yeah, Having yeah, to combine yeah. all of that and put it all into different aspects, especially when it comes to 
to education. That's something really great. So the other question I would like to ask you is in your in the course of your work, working with inmates and having to deal with this kind of people, what how has this changed your perspective and also how has it influenced your life personally? Well, uh, I must confess, it has really changed my perspective to it life. Definitely uh, <laughs> you know, going to the prison mm. and seeing people who never committed a crime mm. and are in the prison. Mm. Uh, yes, destiny is done on them. Mm. And uh, sometimes I imagine if I was the one in the prison, mm. what would I have been? Mm. What would I have been doing? What would I have been achieving? Does it mean these people don't have a goal in life? Mm. Does it mean they don't have a career they want to pursue? Mm. But here they are, you know, destiny is done on them. So uh, life uh, has really been different to me that everything in life uh, has, everything in life has to change in the way you think. You don't take things too serious. You know, for whatever reasons, just be who you are and um, do things the right way. Some of them is as a result of not doing things the right way that has led them to what they are. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you are a guarantor for somebody that you don't really know and you are not sure of. And then the person commits a crime and you find yourself as a guarantor in the prison. You know, these are cases that you find in a prison and you imagine that, wow. Look at what brought this man to the prison. Mm. So some people never committed a crime. Some people committed the crime, but um, they committed it out of the fact that they never think twice of the consequences of yeah. what mm. at the aftermath of it. Mm. So that's why one has to be careful on what you say, what you do, how mm. you do it. Mm. Uh, you know, finding yourself uh in a community crisis and then because you are a youth you went out to go and fight and then the government arrested all the youth in the community that happened in a boy state actually mm. you know uh the guy find himself there because he felt uh is our land we have to fight blah 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 they mm. killed people mm. not him directly but he was part of those that was arrested and he didn't even know when the government will be ready to visit their case. Mm. And you know, the government case is not a case of tomorrow or today. It mm -hmm. can take they can for, leave it for as long as they want to. Just because they never think twice to the consequences of what this is going to be. Mm. And you ask how about your family, they are fine. Who is taking care of them? I don't even know. After all, he doesn't even have what to eat in the prison. So who is going to take care of the family? So these are cases that you see in the prison, which has actually change my thoughts about life that life is not what you think it is mm. take it gently mm. and uh, you know it has also transformed my leadership uh, career because um you know coordinating this kind of uh, project and thinking of uh, you know five things every day thinking of what next to be done for the volunteers mm. how do we move the organization forward mm. how do you you know, sell yourself to the community to see what you are doing as something they need to support. Mm -hmm. And then your own career and family life as well. <laughs> so, you know, it takes uh, 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 a, a whole lot of uh, things from you. Uh, but we thank God for what we are, and what we have been able to achieve over time. Mm -hmm. And we hope to keep doing what we are doing. Yeah. Well done. Well done. I can totally understand when you say your every the whole nonprofit or humanitarian work changes the perspective and the life of the individual involved, especially the founder. Sometimes when you get yeah. to to visit some of your beneficiaries, you you just break down. You you are, you it's like you're helpless. Honestly. You don't know what else Honestly. to do. You don't know how exactly you can change the lives of these people and you begin to put yourself in their shoes and say, Honestly. if this was me, what would I have done? You know, you come to that point in your life and I can really, really understand. So well done again yeah. um, for the work that you do. And finally, before I let you go, 
Are there any specific programs or projects that you have ongoing that you need the sponsorship or partnerships or donations of the public of? It's your time to make a call for, for support. Yeah, well, um, basically for now, um, we are preparing to have another GCE exam, GCE mm -hmm. form for inmates. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, I think people can can also support with. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, we are planning to do hundreds inmates. Mm -hmm. And um, for each form cost about uh, 8,500. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, we believe that um, this is one of the ways that these people can can also have access to mm -hmm. a better opportunity after if somebody have uh, an O level certificate, mm -hmm. uh, at least in our standard in Nigeria, you can even be the president of the country. So, so meaning that the person is up to a standard in our country. Mm -hmm. So, and that is the level at which we want to take them to. Yes, some of them would want to continue with uh, uh, universities, polytechnic and all that. Mm. So we believe that if you can have a sponsorship from people uh, to say, okay, I'm going to take five forms, I'm going to take two, I'm going to take three, I'm going to sponsor them to ensure that they write exam. Uh, that is one. Then two, uh, the juveniles can quote, uh, the, the, is actually going to be a digital literacy session. Coding mm -hmm. will also be part of it and so mm -hmm. many other things. Mm -hmm. You know, we also need um, gadgets, uh, laptops, you know, desktops and all that to, to put things in place. Mm -hmm. And we'll also be needing instructors uh, to also support. So it's not a mod that uh, you say, it's not compulsory that you support with gadgets you can also say okay i will take this angle of uh, digital mm -hmm. class to teach the mm -hmm. uh the inmates uh so you are also contributing in another way mm -hmm. and um these are ways that i think people can support at the moment uh, generally you can say okay let me have your account number and give a token or donate something and then we also used to have a, a basic project that I forget to talk about. You have textbooks at home that you feel mm. you don't really Very need. Okay. Uh, so a donation of textbooks, a donation of uh, um, uh, library books that mm -hmm. you can that can be beneficial mm -hmm. uh, that you want to donate will help in giving out to inmates that um, uh, will be needing it. So these are things that we also feel can be beneficial and people can do at their at ease. Wonderful. Yeah. If you have books that you want to donate, please feel free. As usual, the donation details are in the description box of this video. If you're looking at your screen right now, you would see the website, contact details, emails, everything that you need to be able to reach out to Mr. Makuz and his team so that you can make a donation. If you're interested in volunteering your time and your skill, please also yeah. feel free to reach out. It is very important that we're um, educating and touching lives as we all go um, uh, together in the world. Thank you, Mr. Mafus, for sharing your story you. of the amazing work that you're doing today. I really enjoyed this session and learning from you. It was nice to have you here. Thank you. Nice having you as well. Thank okay. you. All right, Thank everyone. You, Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you all again in the next episode. Do not forget, please share this video. Someone might be interested in supporting the work of Inmates Educational Foundation.